Joseph Stalin. Through political maneuvering, he succeeded in removing Trotsky before exiling him. In only a few months, he seized power and moved into the former Tsar's palace, the Kremlin. His ambition for the Soviet Union had no limits. A paradise for workers, the hope for a fairer society. He initiated large-scale construction projects, skyscrapers, railways. However, right from the start, problems accumulated. The communist dream was already starting to crack. The leader of the Kremlin had been governing only on the propaganda front. We've passed the Child Poverty Reduction Act and have lifted between 50 and 70,000 children out of poverty. He ordered journalists and filmmakers not to describe the world as it was, but rather how it should be. The harvests are bad? Make films showing radiant peasants in magnificent fields. The results are disappointing? Publicize rigged numbers. For Stalin, the communist system was perfect. He claimed any failures were due to sabotage and blamed the party members in charge of the economy. He seemed to take pleasure in making martyrs of those close to him. We will cut off the harmful members of the party. We are in a constant state of stupor and exhaustion. Paranoid, Stalin decided to purge all of society. His right-hand man, the chief of the secret police. I may be short in stature, but my hands are strong. The USSR became a police state, and Stalin's secret police from that point on controlled everything. The lines in the shops are interminable. The party was proud of what it referred to as re-education through labor. Deviant minds being put back on the straight and narrow. Heroes were invented. Intoxicated by the propaganda, foreign communist representatives traveled to Moscow to pay their respects to the dear father of the people. He who had restored pride to the workers around the world. Stalin was the enlightened guide of the communists. His portrait was everywhere, and every Soviet was required to honor him in any circumstances, because Stalin personified the success of communism. Hit hard. Extermination without selection. It's better to go too far than not far enough. We have moved to fight by going Decisive hard. Decisive action. We must go our early. decision to go the hard. The very best chance. We went hard, hard, hard going hard, hard and going early. Are you still a socialist? I describe myself as a social democrat. So you're not hardcore socialist? No. Because as I say, my words my bond. I've watched as international politics has continued to change while serving as the president of the International Union of Socialist Youth, an umbrella organisation of over 150 progressive youth movements from around the world. Some people have asked me if I am a radical. My answer to that question is very simple. Comrades, 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 comrades. Remember that you have comrades around the world fighting for the same principles, fighting for the same things, you have solidarity. Comrades, 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 now LGBT comrades, 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 together as comrades, then and only then will we win the war. Viva UC Viva! Viva UC Viva! See, somebody sent me an, e an email, a video action last Friday, and it had you talking at the Socialist Youth, Socialist Union International, oh, whatever right. it was called, yes, yes. And, and you mentioned the word comrade uh, about four times in a minute. What was that about? 
It was a rally, and I would have been about 25 years old. Well, I can't remember which country it was in. Do you think you've changed since those days? No, not particularly. No. Comrades this, comrades that. Comrades means something. She she said this morning, it doesn't mean anything. It's just, you know, I'm sorry, it does. Comrades means something. It is actually a Marxist term, and you don't pick that sort of thing up um, because you're not a Marxist. Leighton is, is correct in that comrade is actually a Marxist term. And you don't use it if you're not a Marxist. <laughs> yeah, that's what I make of that. I'm a pretty communist. They, they intend that to be a compliment or an insult. I'm not entirely sure. So I'm wondering on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being a complete disaster and 10 being a rollicking success, where are we at with capitalism? Has it failed our people in recent times? Yes. Can you quantify where we we are at with that then? If it's failed, how much of a failure is it? That's a blatant failure. Uh, What else could you describe it as? Yeah, I am a socialist and I'm proud of it. Yeah, there you go. Thank you very much. Bring it on. Angie Warren Clark. Oh, what a pleasure to speak after my colleague, my comrade. Look, the fact of the matter is, the fact, well, there's so many of us great socialists on this side of the house. I stand here as a very proud member of the great socialist democratic Labour Party. The battle for the tight Auckland central seat is on. I'm Helen White. I'm Emma Mello. My name is Chloe Swarbrick. Jenny Marcroft, Tuariki Delamere, Vernon Tava. I know what's going on for small businesses and it means I know um, what's going on for workers. Complicating Labour's plan is Green MP Chloe Swarbrick. Yeah, I think um, like one thing we want to stress is that we fucking hate small businesses. Yeah. Fuck you. Fuck every small business owner. Oh, I just made a death threat. Auckland Central Green candidate, Chloe Swarbrick. I think she's quite likeable. And she herself probably wouldn't disagree with that. Calling her out here, though. When it comes to clothing normal people wear, I don't, I don't even like Star Wars. In politics, though, we have seen that the rules are different. A higher standard when it comes to how they choose to adorn themselves. You are the couture that you keep. Fuck every small business owner. And fuck anyone who's like, when you look after small Kiwi businesses. Fuck small Kiwi businesses. So, so what? She's wearing a hoodie. But there's sort of a tacit endorsement going on here. She's sort of modelling it. Papa, prisons, what is it? Pe- pe- um, people against prisons, Aotearoa. So these groups, there, there are a few of them. From the outside, it does look like they sort of have a, a bit of a membership sharing situation. We don't tax profits, which is collectively made. We do tax profits. Just in, no, we don't tax it nearly enough, Ryan. Just I know we tax it. I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I just want to say, I'm not a novice, okay? And well, I I'm, 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 I research this. Plenty of well-meaning people will be associated with them. I mean, like, nothing wrong with that. Peace is good. That could work, I guess. The abolition of prisons, if you think that that's a bit ambitious, they're not exactly on the fringe. Journalists have them on speed dial, got mainstream connections, and their links to the Green Party aren't as tenuous as that hoodie. It goes deeper. There's our um, future co-deputy prime minister. We have been a green heart, changing the way and influencing the way that this government works. Which one of them looks happier, do you reckon, to be in that photo? Cops don't really listen to argument, they don't listen to reason. What they listen to is harassment, and we found that out when we defeated the armed response teams. We win when we exercise our power over our enemies, and at the moment, the cops are our enemies. That That Green Party heart at the core of the government um, Fire racist cops! Fire racist cops! Fire racist cops! Fire racist cops! Pepper might even have some cultural influence on that too. Green MP Golrez Garaman has moved to correct a misleading tweet she made in response to George Floyd's death. She tweeted, Our police armed trial killed only Māori and Pacifica victims. But the police say no shots were fired during the six-month trial of armed response teams. If you don't like politics, you need to recognise that our politicians are there either because you voted for them or you neglected to vote for an alternative. Not telling anyone who or who, who, who they should or shouldn't be voting for. Maybe she'll win, I don't know, I don't care, I don't even live there. 
Businesses still recovering from the last lockdown could struggle to survive another. Business owners forced to shut for three days were visibly upset as they closed their doors to customers at midday. Fuck every single business that ever existed, that ever will exist. Hopefully there won't be any more if I have anything to do with it. That's just my, yeah, that's just kind of what I'm... Hey, do you agree with this? Do you endorse this sort of attitude? If a journalist or someone with some more credibility wants to pick it up and run with it, it would be a pretty topical inquiry. You can tell by all of this, we were in for a battle. Look, I'm going to explain. I'm going to educate. So maybe this will just be dismissed. A timely smear campaign. Boom has probably put him up to it. Do you think there were elements of sexism and racism and ageism in that campaign? Absolutely. New Zealand's opposition leader has been criticised for heaping praise on China's Communist Party. As Jackson Williams reports, Simon Bridges' comments have alarmed China experts. The national leader this week returned from a five-day visit to China. It was a trip meant to highlight the seriousness with which Simon Bridges treats the China relationship, but it's a trip that he's been forced to defend. In an interview with a state-controlled television network, Simon Bridges applauded China's economic transformation and the role of the Chinese Communist Party. So all in all, it's a, a very a, amazing story. And it's one I think that New Zealanders uh, relate to because we have been direct beneficiaries of it as well. And can I say, uh, President Xi Jinping yeah, okay. is also a wonderful ambassador for our countries. Another engagement away from the camera has also been called into question. Simon Bridges held a meeting with Politburo member Guo Shang Kun, who has been described as the leader of the Chinese secret police. A characterisation Simon Bridges says is incorrect. I'm sure many Kiwis watched that kind of sycophancy and A, were sickened by it and, and B, thought, well, if this is our alternative government, what are we really getting into if this man is so close or so willing to pay obeisance to the emperor uh, when he goes to Beijing? Simon Bridges' praise for the Communist Party and leader Xi Jinping is at odds with Jacinda Ardern's government toughening its stance on China. The Prime Minister maintains her government has a strong relationship with the vital trading partner despite increasingly frosty ties with Beijing. The COVID-19 pandemic has been a turning point in human history. The pandemic and the indifferent and criminal response to it by the capitalist governments the world over has brought youth and workers of the world face to face with the horrible reality of capitalist society. Millions are unemployed and facing eviction. Suicides, drug overdoses or other deaths of despair are also becoming more commonplace. On the other hand, the wealthy have profited enormously, with American billionaires adding more than $1.3 trillion to their collective wealth since the start of the pandemic. Faced with an intractable social and political crisis, the ruling class in the US and internationally is turning towards authoritarianism. The emergence of fascism is inseparable from the staggering levels of social inequality, which is incompatible with democratic rights. The private ownership of the means of production and the division of the world into competing nation states act as chains on the rational development and use of the productive forces of mankind. If the future of humanity is to be secured, capitalism must be abolished. So the question then is, what do we do about it? Fighting for socialism means upholding the political independence of the working class and thereby rejecting its subordination to the Democratic Party. The IYSSE has unshakable confidence in the revolutionary role of the working class. As the vast majority of the population in the world, it is the only social force capable of transforming society. But in order to bring about this turn, the working class must become conscious of its position and its aims. We call for workers to form their own independent fighting organizations. A better world is possible, on the horizon even, but it must be fought for. The Iowa SSE calls on all students and young people who are opposed to inequality, imperialist war, and fascism. On all the heroic and fearless youth who are determined to fight for a better world. To join the Iowa SSE and the Socialist Equality Parties in your country.